So we are going to create a new application, and in this application we are going to use TopLink or Eclipse Link to expose our database as a set of REST services. We chose a custom type of application. We're going to give it a name and a package name. And then in the list of technologies, we're going to choose the TopLink technology. Okay, this will bring in the needed libraries to my project. And at this stage, I can actually click Finish. All right, in this new project, we're going to use the right click to open the new form gallery and choose from the top link section, the entities from tables. This brings in a nice wizard that allows us to specify versions and at the end actually connect to a database. So I'm going to use the HL schema, but I'm actually going to use it on a MySQL database instead of an Oracle database, just to show you how open we are. And once you define the connection, you can test it to make sure that everything works according to plan. Go next and pick up two tables from your data dictionary that you want to work with, in our case, department and employees. And we're not going to explain all the wizard, but you can further um, fine tune your entities. Those are just regular JPA entities. Another thing that was created for us is a persistence unit. The persistent unit by default is using a database service from web logic and um, you can go and create this service i'm actually going to do something else i'm going to use a wizard inside j developer to create a java service facade and one of the things that i can do in this wizard is define that i want a new persistent unit and this persistent unit is going to actually operate outside of the container so i'm going to name it out so it would be easy to identify and the other thing that this wizard gives me is a way to test my entity object. So at this point, I can actually run my client and test it. Next, I'm going to go into my project properties and add a couple of uh, jar files. So the first jar file that I need to add is actually the MySQL um, jar file. Okay. And once I have this, I can actually go and run my client to test my access to my entities and you would see output from the entities showing up here in the log window. So now I know that my entities actually work perfectly fine against the database. And next thing I'm going to add is again another jar. This is the actual jar that allows me to do the top link REST enablement. So I'll point to it in my blog, um, but basically it's the top link data service web jar file. Okay, you can find it inside JDeveloper, edit, to your project and save. Next, we're going to deploy this project. Now, this project is supposed to be web service, so in the deployment, we're going to create a new world deployment file. You can give it a name if you want to. Make sure that the needed libraries are included here, which they should be by default. Okay, so those two. And now you can actually go ahead and deploy the application. So right click on the project, choose new or deployment and deploy. And you can deploy to a standalone while I'm actually going to deploy directly to my embedded WebLogic server. So just running through this wizard would take the, the project, package it as a WAR file and deploy it to the server. And you can find the URL for this down here. So copy this one and then go and open your web browser. And you want to access your embedded WebLogic server, so ours is um, 127.0.0.1 at port 7.1.0.1. Right. And then just paste the name that you got from the URL and you'll get an error because this is not the full URL. Um, in the top link documentation, you can find the full URL to the various operations. I'm just going to pick one of those and you can see basically um, persistence, the name of your uh, version, and then the name of your uh, persistence unit, an entity that I want to access and the name of the entity and even a parameter like the ID here. So this URL, for example, fetches us a specific department, okay? And also the employees for that department. All right, 